Michael McKellar. Thank you, Speaker. Along with food and water, Maslow's hierarchy of needs places warmth, rest, security and safety as absolute fundamental human needs. Safe, secure housing, a place to call home, represents these basic human needs. It is a major determinant in people's lifelong health and well-being. However, in today's Australia, so many people, particularly young people, are excluded from the chance of not only owning their own home, but of housing security. We hear countless stories of the lack of renters' rights, of renters who face eviction in the face of unaffordable rent hikes or having to move home frequently. From friends, I hear how their adult children are having to stay at home well into their 20s and 30s. I spoke to a class of year, nine, uh, sorry, year 11 legal study student last week. Every single student in their, in their class, housing affordability was one of their very top issues of concern. As a GP, I witnessed too many young families forced to move away from McKellar, away from their networks and extended families, in order to find a place where they could afford to live. In McKellar, the median price for a two-bedroom apartment is $1.1 million. The median price for a house is $2.5 million, and the median rent is an eye-watering $1,300 a week. The issue is causing considerable distress in my community because of the lack of affordable. Affordable housing is breaking up families and putting extra stress on young people. As a GP, I also struggled to help women find emergency accommodation when they needed to leave for domestic violence reasons. Our local women's shelters are still having to turn away scores of women and their children each week. And women over the age of 50 are the most likely group now to find themselves homeless. As an, e an MP now, I repeatedly hear stories of how difficult it is to recruit essential workers such as carers, teachers, nurses and policemen to our region because they simply can't afford to live there. Already, a public dental clinic and a drug and alcohol rehabilitation service in McKellar have had to close because of their inability to be able to recruit staff. Speaker, we hear the word crisis often these days, but it's safe to say the housing affordability in Australia has hit crisis levels. In the 1980s, the average house price was 3.5 times the average income. Now it's eight times and rising. So what are the solutions? Yes, we do need to address the immigration levels, and this is happening. Yes, we absolutely need to build more houses and homes, and I welcome the government's investment uh, over the last two years in this. But building houses and apartments doesn't happen overnight. It is deeply unfortunate that in 2013, the Prime Minister of the day, uh, Mr Tony Abbott, made the seriously short-sighted decision to abolish the National Housing Supply Council. This council's role was to provide estimates, projections, analysis and policy advice in relation to housing supply and demand. If that council had remained, I wonder if we would be in this position of a severe lack of supply that we have now in housing. Instead, recurrent policies such as the first home buyer subsidies and grants from consecutive federal and state governments have artificially pushed up property prices, exacerbating, not solving the problem. As the economist Saul Eastleek has said, it's hard to think of any area of widespread public concern where the same policies have been pursued for so long in the face of such incontrovertible evidence that they have failed to achieve their objectives. We need solutions. So recently I convened a citizens' assembly, the McKellar People's Jury on Housing. On an issue such as housing which affects everyone, it's important that I clearly understand the views from people across my electorate, not just the loudest voices. It was wonderful to see the McKellar residents in action. A group of 30 people, randomly selected, came together to listen to a range of experts and to deliberate. Their goal was to come up with three priority solutions to the housing problem. Citizens' assemblies are a way of bringing people back into their democracy and recognises that people have great depth of knowledge and that there is a respectful and constructive way of advocating and negotiating public positions, policy positions. I will have a lot more to say on this issue in due course, but I thank the participants sincerely for their constructive and considered contributions. Thank you.